Mr. Mathwog here, and this lesson is called Associative Property of Multiplication. So it's a quick, pretty fast lesson here, so uh, easy. So here's our uh, common core strand, and uh, our essential question is how can we use the associative property of multiplication to find products? Okay, and don't forget, all your lessons can be found at www.mrmathblog.com, okay? And then click your third grade link, and, and you should have... Uh, all kinds of videos there for you. Okay, so let's access some prior knowledge. The associative property of addition is this. Uh, when I add groups together in parentheses, remember what you do in parentheses, you got to do first. So if I added 7 plus 4 first and then plus 6, it's going to be the same as if I added 4 plus 6 first and then added 7 less later. So when grouping the add-ins, the add-ins are just the numbers that are being added together. When grouping the add-ins is changed, the sum will stay the same. See, 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 6 is 17. Over here, 4 plus 6 is 10. And then 10 plus 4 is 17. Okay, so 10 is nice and easy to work with, so I'd rather add the 4 and 6 together first. Okay, well, uh, the same goes for multiplication, and it's called the associative property of multiplication. So I can multiply numbers and regroup them uh, to multiply other numbers first. So this states that when grouping the factors is changed, the product will stay the same. So for example, here's an example. Each car on a roller coaster over here uh, has two rows of seats. Okay, so imagine you got a little car that you sit in and there's two rows of seats. Each row has two seats. Okay, so there's two rows with two seats. So that means there's four seats in each car, right? If there are three cars on the train, on each train, how many seats are on each train? Okay, so we, first we can use a little array right here. So we can use this array to show three. Here's, here's three groups of two by twos. Okay, here's a two by two. Here's another two by two. And then here's another, and we'll go two rows here by two columns. Okay, so here's one, two, three groups of two by twos, okay? Well, each two by two is equal to four. See, this is two times two. You can just add them up also, which equals four. This is two times two, and this is two times two, okay? So three times four is just going to be the addition of all these fours right here. So three times four, and a lot of people already know three times four equals 12, okay? Well, um, uh, so there's uh, three cars that have four seats in each car, and there are 12 seats on each roller coaster train, okay? So we know that the answer is going to be 12. All right, so the associative property of multiplication says that we can regroup the factors and get the same product, okay? So instead of doing three times and then do two times two first, two times two is four, four times three is 12, we can regroup it and group and, put, and just move the parentheses over. So can you see the parentheses just get moved over from here to here? Okay, I put the parentheses right there and then put one right there. So we can do the three times two first, which is six and six times two is 12, okay? So each side you get 12 on that and that's called the associative property of multiplication. And what we're doing is, instead of associating these two numbers first, we associated these two numbers first and multiplied them and then just multiplied the other number later. So that's what associative property is. Okay, so I'm going to remind us what commutative property means and associative property, okay? Commutative property is like when I commute to work, I drive my truck to work. So numbers sometimes commute around um, a multiplication sign. So here we're going to do 6 times 3 times 2, and we're going to change the order of the factors, and the product will be the same. Okay, so 6 times 3 times 2. All right, what we did, instead of grouping, associating the 6 times 3 first, we associated the 3 times 2 first. So we put the parentheses around the 3 times 2 first. That's called the associative property of multiplication. I associated these two numbers first instead of these two numbers first, all right? And then 3 times 2 is 6. And then so we have 6 times 6, which equals 36. All right, let me show you a little different way right here. Okay, so here's the same one, except I did, I picked it up right here, 6 times 3 times 2. Now watch what I do here, you guys. This is the commutative property, because what I did was, is these two numbers commuted around that multiplication symbol. Okay, remember when I drive to work, I commute to work. This 3 commuted over here, and this 2 commuted over here. That's all this is right here. So they just commuted around the multiplication symbols. That's why this is the commutative property of multiplication. Okay, and then we can do the associative property. I just move the parentheses around the 2 and the 3. So 6 times, I'm sorry, around the 2 and the 6, sorry. 
So we can do 6 times 2 first, which is 12, and then do 12 times 3, okay? So 6 times 2 is 12, and then 12 times 3 is also 36, okay? So whichever way uh, fits your fancy better on that, okay? Here, let's try this, you guys. Find each product. You'll see the advantage of this really well, you guys, especially with some with some uh, targeting numbers. There's total um, uh, targeting numbers right here. Okay, I do not want to do 6 times 25 first and get that number and then multiply it times 4 afterwards. It's easier if I group, regroup the 25 with the 4 first. So by the associative property of multiplication, I'm going to group the 25 times 4 first right there. Okay, now if you have 4 quarters, how much money do you have? Okay, you have 4 quarters. Hopefully you know that's a dollar, you guys. So 25 times 4 is 100. It's 100 pennies. Okay, so 25 times 4 is 100, and then we can do 6 times 1 is 6 and add two zeros. So 6 times 100 is 600. Okay, that's pretty slick. We'd get 600 if we'd multiply 6 times 25, and whatever that was times 4, we'd get 600. Okay, now watch this. We'll do some uh, trickery over here. We're going to... We're gonna, um, do the commutative property of multiplication first. I just commuted this 7 over here and this 5 over here. So the 5 and 7 got moved around. Now I'm going to use the associative property and group the 2 times 5 first. Okay? 2 times 5 is a nice number to multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. Okay? And then 10 times 7 is just 70 right there. We would have got 70 if we would have done 7 times 5 first and then multiplied that times 2. But it's easy if you can see some good targeting numbers to multiply and move around your parentheses either by the associative property or the commutative property and it just makes these problems a lot faster. Okay, alright you guys, take care.